As I looked at the gospel passage from Matthew for this week, I realized from the post-it notes that I found uh, stuck into my study Bible that the last time that this passage came up in the lectionary was the long Canada Day weekend of the 150th celebration. And uh, I thought that was kind of interesting and, and strange to compare that, that wonderful celebration of, of that year with the social distancing restrictions that we can expect for this year's celebration. But God is good, and I still look forward to the, the low-key festivities that uh, Reverend Bill and I have planned, and I hope that you also have some really exciting and, and meaningful family time and celebrations for Wednesday. I do like this passage, though. It talks about welcoming hospitality, acts of kindness that are part of our Christian service. It is about the profoundness of something as simple as offering a cup of cold water in Jesus' name. A few minutes ago back in the gallery, I talked about the cup of life and the cup of compassion, the chipped and the broken cup, the cup of blessing. Now, imagine all of them offered over to Jesus. Imagine them put to good use as we share the gifts of hospitality, always and always in Jesus' name as part of our Christian service. And to be clear, Christian service is, is more than simply volunteering to, to do good. Christian service is, is discipleship in service to Christ. The passage that, uh, that Susan read from, from Matthew 10, comes at the end of a long discourse on discipleship and mission. The full discourse itself is, is fairly lengthy address that Jesus gave to, to prepare his disciples and, and his followers for the struggles that they were going to encounter as they went about ministry. Jesus wanted to, to remind them that individuals and, and social constructs are, are based on self-interest. And that sometimes self, self-interested to a point of total self-absorption. Now that was important for them because they needed to realize that such self-interests were, and still are, so deeply and systemically ingrained that even though they had this wonderful message, the best message of the gospel's good news, message of love, they were still going to encounter uh, resistance. They could bank on the fact that they were going to encounter resistance to this idea of a new order of things. That is a, that's a basic summary of the first half of the discussion that Jesus is having with his followers. The second half of the discussion or the discourse has to do with the responsibility of hospitality. And even with the reality of the resistance that they were going to encounter, even with that resistance, there was an expectation of behavior, including hospitality, that needed to be offered. And justice and compassion and charity are all linked to that kind of inclusive hospitality. Remember now that hospitality is a gift of the Holy Spirit given to the church for the work of the church. This is real, genuine hospitality. Uh, we sometimes throw out that word, hospitality, and, and sometimes when we use it, we, we mean it as a narrowly defined as acceptance or socializing with those who are just like us or those who we enjoy being around. And that's okay too, but it's not exactly what Jesus is talking about in this piece. 
I mean, every church that I have ever been in thinks they are a, fe- a friendly church. Now, some of them were, some of them not so much, but every church thinks they're a friendly church because they enjoy gathering with their friends. And that social aspect is really quite important uh, in building the community of faith. And right now where we can't gather, we, we really miss that and we realize how important that social aspect is. We're missing our, our after worship fellowship time uh, during this quarantine. And, and I gotta tell you, man, oh man, there are, there are some of you that I just can't wait. To, to have a cup of tea and, and a cookie with and, and just catch up on our lives because we need that kind of hospitality as a community. And that is good so long as we're, we're, we're always cautious not to fall into a, a close-knitness, close-knitness of, of a group that excludes others. And we are very blessed at St. John Stevensville with, uh, with friendly folks, but there, there are a few folks in this congregation who have such a, a gift of hospitality that they make sure that no one is ever left outside the fellowship. And we kind of take that for granted because we're used to that, but for someone who has been in uh, several different congregations, I can tell you that is an absolute gift. And Jesus reminds us that even if we aren't given the, the spirit gift of hospitality, we as a church community are still giving a responsibility of hospitality. And that extends into compassionate justice. You know, years back when, uh, when church buildings and other public buildings were being brought up to accessibility codes, there was some backlash with that about the cost of making church buildings accessible when nobody in the congregation was in a wheelchair. Now, the irony that someone in a wheelchair may have come to the church and looked at the 15 steps or whatever you needed to get into the building and went elsewhere, that was kind of lost on some. We're, we're very fortunate here. We have an incredibly accessible building. Um, and, and given the, the number of friends here who are actively uh, assisted by a walker or, or a cane, you can imagine how daunting it would be if our building wasn't accessible. The folks who joined here from Central United in Fort Erie know how painful it was to give up their church building. But it wasn't accessible. And there was no easy or or cost-effective solution to make it accessible. So they made the very hard but faithful decision to sell that building, and many of the folks came here. And that faithfulness is one of the financial foundations of the Embrace Ministries that we have today in downtown Fort Erie. Thirty-odd years ago, when we began to um, ordaining openly gay uh, or openly homosexual ministers in the United Church, and then more than, uh, my gosh, it's a decade now, when we began celebrating same-sex weddings, there were some folks who asked, why should we be celebrating same-sex weddings when there are no gay people in our church? And what do you know? It turns out there were and are, and continue to be as folks feel accepted and loved. By offering hospitality, inclusive hospitality, to someone whose life circumstances may be unfamiliar to us, we suddenly get to experience a shift in perspective, where we begin to recognize the value and the giftedness of others who are also the beloved children of God. We are very often given the gift of potential relationship. But sometimes we we don't accept that gift. We, we, 
overlook that potential. Something uh, inside of us, I don't know if it's pride or ego or uninterestedness or selfishness or whatever it may be, sometimes keeps us from forming new, genuine, nurturing relationships. And when we do that, we miss out on the gift of blessing. Because when we offer hospitality, we also receive the gift of connection. And Jesus, in Matthew's Gospel, encourages us to take the, those relationships that, that we enjoy with those whom we love, those who, who are like us, those who we care about and would do anything in the world for, to take those relationships and to expand it. To expand it beyond uh, the sanctuary doors, beyond St. John Stevensville, beyond Greater Fort Erie and Niagara and Ontario, to take it out into the world with a mission and service and share that good news of the gospel. One of the uh, post-it notes that uh, I found in my study Bible that I mentioned earlier around this passage of Matthew had this quote, this, this Brazilian proverb in it. And I'm not sure why I had put it there at the time, whether I had ever used it or not, but I want to share it. And it says, when I dream alone, it is just a dream. When we dream together, it is the beginning of reality. When we work together following our dream, it is the creation of heaven on earth. Through our gift of inclusive hospitality, we can include others and dream of something better than we know now. Our vision statement for St. John Stevensville is love God, live Jesus. To love our God and live as Jesus would have us live. It is the vision of a world that serves Christ through compassionate hospitality. And sometimes, my friends, sometimes that starts with the simple kindness of offering a cup of cold water in Jesus' name. Thanks be to God. Amen.